can a gringo rent a car in Brazil? The answer is yes. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. What's up everybody, I'm Ollie. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below. Now this video is broken up into three parts. The first part, I'm going to explain some of the legal things that you need to do before you actually even think about uh, hiring a car. The second part is going to be a tutorial about how you can actually rent a car with a certain company. The third part is going to be some tips on things you need to be aware of when you're actually out on the road. So stay tuned for all of the parts because it's going to be really useful if you ever decide to rent a car here in Brazil. Now the reason that I rented this car here right now, it's actually a massive family car. Let's see if I can show you around the back there. It's basically, I've packed up my life and I'm on my way to Rio de Janeiro. So I've been going through the, the rolling hills of Belo Horizonte. Uh, it's been perfect and it's been a little bit scary at times because I, um, uh, I don't drive on this side of the road. We drive on the other side in Australia and in fact, I haven't driven for two years. So it's been a little bit ah, at times, but overall it's been a good, a good journey. It's automatic as well. So I paid a little bit of extra for that just because, you know, like it, Brazil is hilly enough. So I think that I needed to, uh, I needed to get the automatic car. <laughs> So if you're here on a tourist visa, you can actually drive in Brazil, but you can't drive just for example on your Australian or American driver's license. You actually need to get your license translated into Portuguese. So this is the first step in the process, well this is part one of the video if you like. So you need to, if, if you want to get that process done before you get to Brazil, uh, do it there, get, get, uh, go to the consulate and get them to translate or, you know, a sworn Portuguese translator. Or you need to find a translator here in Brazil. Um, I was in Belo Horizonte. I literally typed in um, English to Portuguese translation and I found uh, a couple of different service providers. I clicked on one, I spoke to them on WhatsApp and they did my translation for 90 reais, which is like, oh, like maybe 15 or 16 American dollars. I'll put the correct number down here, but it's not that much. and. Uh, that's all you need to basically go and, and, and rent a car. So this is the legal stuff. Um, if you're here for longer than 180 days, which is so you'd be on like a student visa or a work visa, you actually need to get a Brazilian license. So take that into consideration as well. Okay, so part two is a tutorial. So we're gonna go and have a look at how to rent a car on Movida, which is the company that I used. Okay, so I'm on a website called Movida. And during my research, I found that this was actually the cheapest and most usable website the, uh, to rent a car. And the good thing about it is you don't have to be Brazilian. You don't need a CPF, which is the Brazilian tax number that a lot of places need. Uh, you can actually put your passport. Now, you can choose Portuguese, Spanish, or English. I'm on the English version, but it's clearly, like, still in Portuguese. Anyway, where do you want to go? So here we type in where we want to go. Let's just say we're going from Belo Horizonte, which is where I went. Um, I am going to do Lourdes, Lourdes, I don't know how to say that, uh, but that's in the center of Belo Horizonte. Now, if you're going to return it to the same place, that's fine, but if you're going to like Rio or you're going to Sao Paulo, you need to click Devolver em Outro Loja, which is take it to somewhere else. And here I would put Rio de Janeiro and I put Santos Dumont Airport because this is the airport in the center of Rio. Galeão is the international airport, but it's like out of town. So you want to put Santos Dumont if, you want, if you're going here. You choose a date. Let's just say we're going on Saturday. We pick up at, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning. And then we're going to return it on the Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock as well. So that'll be one day. And we click Busca, which is to search, obviously. Okay, and that will give us plenty of options now to choose our car. Now, M for manual, obviously. So 92 reais is what you would pay per day. Depends how comfortable you feel driving on the left hand side of the road. You can choose manual or automatic. So let's try and find an automatic car. Automatic, see, the difference between an automatic car um, is 121 and the manual car is 99. Uh, so there's not much of a difference. It comes with air conditioner, you get bags, five seaters. It gives you all the details here. So let's play Paga agora com desconto is like pay now with a discount or paga depois is when you pay actually in the shop. 
So we're gonna pay pagar agora. Here is important, CPF is if you're Brazilian, but we wanna come up here and click foreigner. And here you'll type in your passport number. So once you log in, uh, I've already logged in here, meu portal. So you put your, your, pass, uh, your passport number and that, and then you choose a car. So we're gonna pay now with, uh, with the discount. And then obviously like in every page, you go through different things that you can add on. Uh, the different levels of protection, I got 44 a day and that covers everything, all right? So it covers, you know, everything. I think it's better to be safe. Like 44 hay eyes is like $8. Like, it's nothing in the grand scheme of things. And then you can go down and look at uh, protection vidros, uh, lack of the windscreen, protection of the tires, you can pay for that. Um, you can get another driver for $7, 7 hay eyes 90 a day. And there's lots of other things that you can get um, that you don't really need. Anyway, so we can see that here we have the total price. So let's have, let's go through how much it's going to cost. So if you pick it up and you take it to a different place, it's going to cost more money. So you can see on the side here, it says Tasha G Devolução and Outra Cidade. Like that's pretty much the most of the price. The fact that you have to, you're taking it back to a different city. So imagine if you're just taking it to Rio, like you cut 355 hayas off your, off your bill. So it's normally about $20 a day, 102 hayas. And then we've got our protection and the carbon free. So it's gonna be 564 hay eyes. And then you uh, can pay in the loja, which is pay at the shop, or you can pay now and then you can continue with that. Um, yeah, so that's how you do, oh, that's how you do, obviously you need to put in your details here, but that's how you do, uh, that's how you make a reservation in with Movida. One great thing about Brazil is they actually fill up your car, so you don't even have to get out. So um, you just tell them the amount of, that you want or if you want to fill it up and they'll do that for you and they'll bring the, the card machine over so you can pay them there as well. So part three are things that you need to be aware of when you're out here driving in Brazil. And the first thing that I recognized is um, speed is kind of arbitrary, like people don't really follow the speed limit. I remember I was coming out of Bergar, Belo Horizonte at the start of today and I was sitting behind a police officer doing the speed limit, right, 80 kilometers an hour and I just had cars speed past me and go past this police officer and nothing happened. So sorry about that, my phone actually got really hot and I couldn't record any more and because the trip was like seven hours I needed to um, I need to keep going but going back to like the fact that speeding is kind of like a personal choice here and the police are doing nothing it leads on to my next point because like where I'm from in Australia like we have laws that if you're not going fast or if you're not overtaking you need to be in like the slow lane which in Australia is the the, the left lane but like here in Brazil because they drive on the other side it's the right lane so that doesn't exist here so speed people just choose to go whatever speed they want and quite often they will sit in the everyone will sit in the fast lane because the quality of that lane is much better than the slow lane so quite often you'll see a lot of undertaking overtaking undertaking going on so rather than just like seeing who's the fast cars are coming you'll ha you have to look on both sides like someone might undertake you someone might overtake you so my advice is to sit in the slow lane unless you're overtaking continue with how you would drive back home because it's quite dangerous and like people like absolutely they fly here um it's incredible and uh, again that leads on to my next point which is speed cameras like there are tons and tons and tons of speed cameras um, and the speed limit basically is anywhere between 70 and 110 from the road from Berga to Rio and you'll find that all throughout Brazil so speed cameras are everywhere and quite often you'll find because people like to drive at a certain speed they will all of a sudden slam the brakes on when there's a speed camera. So you need, not only are you like watching for people undertaking you, overtaking you, uh, ahead there's slow cars and whatever, you also need to be aware of the fact that people are gonna slam on their brakes to uh, not be caught by the speed camera. I think, I was counting and I think I passed like 12 speed cameras within the space of like half an hour. You know, from Sydney to Canberra, like the Sydney to Canberra, the capital of Australia, there I think there's two speed cameras, three hours of road, whereas like in half an hour here in Brazil, there's 12. So you need to be aware that there are a lot of speed cameras going on. Um, so yeah, again, 
Speed is like a personal choice. I didn't see any policemen pull anyone over. In fact, I didn't really see many policemen. Be aware that people will undertake you, so, and they will sit in the fast lane because the quality of the road, quality of that lane is a lot better. And there's a lot of speed cameras, so, you know, you have a phone out and a phone that recognises speed cameras and, and make sure you're watching the people in front of you because they're going to slam on the brakes because they'll be going from like 90 kilometres an hour and the speed limit's 60 and they'll slam it on like at the last minute so that's another thing to be aware of. Overall my experience was very positive, uh, it got me here, I enjoyed it, it was a bit of a challenge to drive on the left side uh, especially in Rio because like the lanes here in Rio are just like spiders, they just like like go out and it's kind of crazy. But really happy that uh, I was able to do it and if you have any questions definitely leave me a comment and if you found this video or any of my videos useful consider subscribing uh, and hitting the bell down below so you don't miss any of my updates from Rio, updates from South America and Brazil.